Hi, this is Ah Singh. Today I would like to share how to create and customize a date picker using ActiveX controls. Let's go to the Developer tab, click on Insert, and choose Label. Insert it at a desired place. Then, click on Properties and customize the label. For example, change the back color by selecting Menu Bar. Afterward, delete the caption. Let me resize this label to a height of 147 and a width of 210. If we want the calendar to have a title bar, insert another label and cover the upper area of the existing label. Change the back color by selecting the desired color. Then, delete the caption. Next, insert a label to show the month and year selected by users. Let's customize this label. Change the back color and the caption. Let me type the current month and year. Afterward, format the font size accordingly. I prefer a font size of 10. Then, make a copy of this label and change the caption to format. Move it to the desired place. Under this label, let's insert a combo box to allow users to select the desired date format. Format the font size. Then, scroll down and look for text. Type the default format here. If we wish to always show today's date on top of this calendar, we can insert another label and customize it. Change the back color. Next to caption, type today's date. Format the font style if necessary. Let's say I like bold and a size of 13. Next, insert a command button. To display an up or down arrow on it, navigate to the insert tab, click on illustration, and choose icons. Type arrow in the search engine, select the desired arrow, and click on insert. Crop the unwanted area and rotate it to the desired direction. Then, Press Ctrl C to copy. Click on the Command button, under Properties, look for Picture, and press Ctrl V to paste. Next, duplicate this Command button and change the direction of the arrow, copy. Select the Command button and paste it next to Picture. After completing these steps, delete the icon. Next, we need 7 labels to represent the days. Insert a label at the desired location. Also, Change the back color and the caption. I want it starting from Sunday. Then, format the font size, ensuring that the text is always centered align. Also, change the width of this label to 19.5. Next, duplicate it. Change the caption to Mon 4 Monday and make sure the top position is the same as the previous label. To do this, select the previous label, take note of the value next to top and go back to the label to change its top value if necessary. Since the width of this calendar is 210, and we have 7 days in a week, the left position of the Mon label should be increased by 30 from the left value of the Sun label. Let's check the value. The left value is 78. Select the Mon label and change the left value if necessary. Repeat the same steps for Tuesday through Saturday. Once done, select all those days, right-click, and choose group to group them. Copy and paste. You can use the mouse to move it to the desired location or use the arrow keys to make a small move. Lastly, check the left value of the first label, ensuring it is the same as the previous line. Next, repeat these steps, and this time pay attention to the border of this group. Take note of the gap between the border and the previous line. Duplicate again and move it to the desired position. Repeat these steps three more times. It is crucial to ensure that the sequence of numbers increases from left to right and top to bottom. As for this example, the numbers increase from 13 to 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and lastly to 54. Once finished checking, select one of the controls, press Ctrl A, then right click and choose group to group them. Then, go to the Home tab in the Editing group. Click on the magnifier icon and select Selection Pane. Rename the group, say Date Picker, and the calendar is finally created. Now, we can formulate the calendar. Go to the Developer tab and click on Visual Basic. Insert a module. As usual, start by giving it a name, let's say Run for Date. First, record the calendar month. Create a variable, let's say CM. Since the day is missing, Let's make use of the date value function. 
Opening parenthesis, use day one, including space, type within quotation marks. Use an ampersand to join the day with the month and year. End with a closing parenthesis. Next, create another variable, let's say fs, to determine the first Sunday of the selected month, which is equal to the first day of the month minus its weekday plus 8. Then, create a condition to check the day. If the day of the first Sunday is not equal to 1, then we should go back to the previous week. This ensures that all days of the month are shown on the calendar. Start with if, end with if. Next, create a for loop with a variable, say i, that will iterate from the 13th label to the 54th label. I would make use of a with statement for the labels. The labels are all on sheet 1 and they are known as OLE objects. Opening parenthesis, type label with quotation marks and use an ampersand to run through the labels using the variable i. Closing parenthesis and followed by dot object. This allows us to recap the label easily in the following lines. Firstly, record the day by changing the caption of the label. Always start with a dot, and this is equal to the day of the first Sunday or, more precisely, the variable fs. Let's create some conditions to customize the day. Firstly, compare the months. If the month of fs is different from the month selected, then I would change the font color of this label using for color, making it equal to vb black. To ensure the user is unable to select this label, let's disable it by setting enabled equal to false. If it is not the case, we have else if. If fs is today's date, then I would change its font color to vb red. The label is enabled, otherwise, the font color should remain as black. End these conditions with end if. Start with with and end with with. fs should proceed to the next day by adding one. Finish with one label and proceed to the next. We can now formulate the other controls. Let's get back to the spreadsheet. Make sure the design mode is on. Firstly, double click on the upward arrow button. When this button is clicked, we should go back to the previous month. Therefore, let's change the caption of the label 3. Since we are currently in sheet 1, we can use me followed by dot label 3 to call the label. Use date value to record the first day of the month. Again, type 1 with a space within quotation marks and join it with the label using an ampersand. The first day of the month minus 1 will get us back to the previous month. Since I only need the month and year, I would format this date using the desired format. Type the format within quotation marks. Always keep in mind that different languages might use different date symbols. We can check online for the correct symbols. In the search engine, type format function VBA in the preferred language, then look for the web page with the title Microsoft Learn. Click the link. Then scroll down and look for date symbols. Follow these symbols when writing this format. Once it is done, remember to update the days by calling the module. Copy the name of the module. Go back to sheet 1 and paste it here. Next, double click on the downward arrow button. Copy this code and paste it here. Let's make some amendments. Use the smallest possible last day of the month, which is 28. Instead of minus 1, we should add 4 to move to the next month. Last, let's formulate the combo box. Double click on it. We should allow the user to preview the format using label 5. So, we should have me.label5 equal the format, opening parenthesis, with the date being label 5, a comma, and the format referring to the combo box itself. Now, let's think about when we should show or hide this calendar. Let's consider displaying this calendar only if cells from column A are selected. From the list of objects, choose worksheet and ensure we're using the selection change procedure. Next, write a condition to check if cells are selected in the specified range. Use the intersect method to determine if the target cell and the range overlap. Unfortunately, we don't have a direct way to check for something to indicate overlapping. However, we do have a code called nothing, and not nothing essentially means something. If this is the case, we can now call the calendar using the name that we defined earlier. Use a with statement followed by me.shapes.range, opening parenthesis, type the name within quotation marks, and end with a closing parenthesis. Always reference the calendar with a dot. Let's change the visibility, that is, set visible to true. Then, change the left position. 
Use cells with target.row for the row component and target.column plus 1 for the column component. With this method, when I ask for the left value, the calendar will always be shown next to the selected cell. Don't forget to change the top position, which is equal to target.top. Begin with with and conclude with end with. Next, I would provide a few formats for the user to choose. Use with statement followed by the combo box. Remember to clear the existing list before providing options to ensure those options are not duplicated. Always use dot add item before the format and type it within quotation marks. Repeat the same steps until the last format and end the statement with end with. Since the content of the combo box is cleared, I will then set the combo box equal to the default format or the preferred format. Next, update label 5 using today's date with the desired format. Do the same for label 3 as well and run for the days using the module run for date. If the cell selected is not from the set range, then the calendar should stay invisible. Copy this statement, paste it here, and set visible to false. End this condition with and if. The last thing we need to do is write code to send the date to the selected cell when a day is clicked. Let's double click on label 13. Use active cell for the selected cell. Again, use date value to record the date, which is the current day, month, and year. Remember to leave a space when joining the text. Then, format the number format of the selected cell, which should be referred to as the combo box. Once the date is sent to the selected cell, the calendar should become invisible. Repeat the same steps for the rest of the labels. To simplify the process, let's use a hack so that we don't have to type these codes repeatedly. Firstly, press Ctrl N to create a new workbook. Give a header, say number. Since we need to write similar codes for label 13 to label 54, type 13 and press Enter. Select the cell, in the editing group, click on fill icon, and select series. Choose columns and give a stop value, for this case, it is 54. Click on OK. Then, save this workbook. Browse and navigate to the desired file location, rename the file if necessary. Save it and then close this workbook. Next, copy the code and open a Word document, then paste the code. Afterward, go to the Mailings tab, click on Select Recipients, and choose Use an Existing List. Navigate to the file location and select the file. Click on Open and then OK. Then, select 13 and click on Insert Merge Field. Choose the field that we created. Repeat the same steps for the other 13. Lastly, press Alternate Shift N and click on OK. Next, press Ctrl A and then Ctrl C. Close the Word document, without saving if not an issue. Return to Visual Basic and paste the code. Everything is now done. Return to the spreadsheet, turn off design mode, and now we should be able to use the calendar. If I select any cells under column A, the calendar is visible, otherwise, it is invisible. Clicking on the upward arrow button brings me back to the previous month, while the downward arrow button brings me to the next month. Click on a day, and the date is sent to the selected cell automatically with the preset number format, as we can see here. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.